Hi, y'all. Good noon, everyone. Weird. Hi. <laughs> Hello. There are things popping up all over my screen, uh, which is strange, but happy Monday to you. Uh, my name is Pastor Casey. I am an associate pastor and director of family ministries at Boundary, and it is good to see you today. Um, coming to you live from just outside of uh, Washington, D.C., um, and it is raining. Um, so there's that. <laughs> uh, I always get to be the one to recommend worship to you, and I just want to tell you that if you did not catch us live yesterday in worship, then you missed something crazy. Our server went down, um, I guess about 20 minutes before we were supposed to go live. Um, we have an amazing, amazing, amazing team, if you didn't know that already, um, and fearlessly led by our AV manager, uh, Eric Lee, we were able to pivot and move to Zoom. So our worship yesterday looks different than it normally does. And it was very human. It was very authentic. It was kind of beautiful. Um, so yeah, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, I hope that you'll go back and watch it and perhaps share it with somebody that you think uh, might be blessed by it. Pastor Ginger started off our learning to sing the blues, um, our Lenten season uh, with a message about lament and about relationship. And it was it was really, really powerful. I've noticed too that like spirit tends to show up in in the mess. So if you've ever seen that, then um, you might you might relate to this as well. So yeah, um, I also want to just mention that the Auto Parent Podcast this week has a special guest. Uh, you might know him. His name's Pastor Ben Roberts, and he's the director of social justice and also an associate pastor at Boundary, um, and he's a dad. To baby George. So um, yeah, we're going to welcome him on the podcast. It'll go live on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about giving up. So I have this author that I really like. Her name is Glennon Doyle, and she talks about how often she gives up. <laughs> and she says, like, I give up 20 times a day. I just, I give up. And then, you know, we start again. Um, and it, I've been thinking about that particular quote and that idea of giving up so frequently. I've been thinking about it over the past couple of weeks. And earlier this morning, um, in my meditation time, it sort of felt like just a poem about giving up was kind of flowing out of me. So I wanted to share that with us today. Um, so, yeah, this is called The Art of Giving Up. I much prefer to give down, definite and buried, entombed, a sure thing, freedom to no longer carry or weigh down my wings. I much prefer to give down, an offering of assurance, safety under lock and key, a quizzical lesson in endurance, to try to hide something away from me. Death grip on the universe as if there is such a thing. A soil crusted hearse, unclear what to bring. Give down. You can trust me, it is all I've ever known. Shackled, but oh so free. With wings so heavy, I've never flown. Give down. Keep carrying on, it is the only way. Lost, but I feel like I've won. And look at me, I'm okay. Circumstantial thought, as if that's enough. A darkened hearse, trunk full of stuff, but the body it forgot. Race to fine land, body gaining headway, trimmer in the hand. You'll never outrun me, I hear it say. You may forget, lose sight in your rear view long enough to dry your sweat, but next time you might not recall me or you. Good, that's why I gave you down, to hide away for a while, last place, thorny crown, memories they stockpile. You might want to check again, though. 
A seedling has sprouted. You tried to give me down, friend, but see, I don't care that you ever doubted. Acceleration slows. Push open the passenger door. An invitation to pose. No longer can ignore. Get in, body. I'm tired of giving down. Wait, you're not just some body. I recognize that frown. Onward, body shouts. But where? Let's try a different route. But I'm scared. I know body says with love look there follow that dove that's the thing about giving down whatever it is we give down we'll always find a way to give up take seeds or profits or buried leads or leaky faucets or heavy birds or crucified saviors or unkind words or unhealthy behaviors it's an art really to give things to the above and to do so freely, an impossible act of self-love. Hard on the heart, how do we even start? Look just there, follow that dove. So I think <clears throat> there are about a million ways that we can think about the art of giving up. For me, um, it's sort of, uh, sort of an invitation to allow the work of spirit to do what she's doing. <laughs> um, and to know that perhaps we don't have control over it. Um, and sort of the play on words about giving down is like, yeah, I feel like I need to have control, like a death grip on the universe, um, as if that's something I can even do. But to have control over every single thing, especially in a national pandemic and all of the things that are, are in a worldwide pandemic and a national pandemic of racism and like all of the things that are happening right now, um, to feel like we have control of something is a, is a nice and earnest desire. Um, and yet it doesn't matter how much we give down, how much we try to bury, how much we try to like lock away um, like in a safe, it doesn't matter how much we try to do that, it's gonna find its way out. And sometimes it'll find its way out through our bodies. So in anxiety or stress or we become ill, I mean, it literally weakens our, immu our immune system. And so sometimes giving up is a beautiful, like it's a beautiful expression of submission to spirit. Um, sort of like when you, when you enter into the ocean and it begins to like undulate, sort of just like giving, like letting it go, letting the universe kind of undulate and, um, and having some faith which is hard, right? Um, yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. I've also thought a little bit about how um, this idea of, of controlling what we feel like, um, like we need to control, um, what often happens actually, <laughs> is that um, it, the resolution of whatever that thing is was completely out of our control. <laughs> and so, in fact, the act of control, all it really did was make us miserable. Um, and I'm totally preaching to myself, so I hope that you all know that. Um, I mean, especially this is especially true about parenting as well. Like, ooh, just like want to control all the things. Um, and realizing that like, yeah, trying to bury or squirrel or um, sort of hide away all of those things is an act of control and it's gonna, it will always find its way out. Because you know why? Because Jesus 
found his way out, right? Like I'm thinking about this in a in a um, in a Lenten sort of using a Lenten hermeneutic and thinking about the tomb. I even reference like entombed because that's what we want to do. We want to say it is finished, bury it away, um, not look at it, um, and kind of move on. But you know what? It will find its way out. The seedling will find its way out. Jesus found his way out. Like it will rise up. It will give up. And when it gives up, there's going to be this beautiful exchange of the cosmos and us. And it's going to invite us into a way of living that is open and healed and restorative. It's going to have justice. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be the kingdom sort of laid out everywhere. Um, and ultimately, we'll realize we had zero control over any of this. Um, and the beautiful thing about the kingdom, too, is that you can't hide it away. You can't squirrel it away. You can't bury it. You can't do any of those things. Um, it's like, it's like a, a plant coming through a crack in the pavement. So, yeah. That's what I was thinking about today. I got more excited about it than I thought I would. Um, especially on a dreary, rainy day. I was like, blah. But now I feel excited, ready to go. Hope you do too. Um, yeah, so I hope you, that you'll stick around to our various social media pages. Um, stick around here on Facebook for some lives this week from our clergy. And um, yeah, remember that I love you and that I miss you. And I can't wait um, to see you again soon. And, you know, as always, good noon, everybody. <laughs>